Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Hair History, the series where I walk you through women's hair styling fashions throughout European history. Today we are going to talk about the 14th century, but before we get started with that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about today's sponsor, because this video is kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa. You guys know how much I love Ana Luisa. They make beautiful, dainty, minimalist jewelry that is made out of recycled materials, recycled gold, and their whole production process is transparent and sustainable, which is fantastic. They are currently running a Black Friday sale of buy one get one 60% off. So if you ask me, now is the perfect time to go on there and browse for some Christmas presents. Jewelry always makes a good gift around the holidays and Ana Luisa pieces are fantastic quality for a really good price. Definitely be sure to check that out. I actually recently gifted a couple of necklaces to my sister-in-law. She loves stacking necklaces, wearing several at the same time and Ana Luisa pieces are perfect for that. And these also lend themselves amazingly for that end. She has a couple of statement pieces here and then a couple more minimal chain necklaces that are perfect to combine with those. I really like layering Anna Luisa necklaces myself as well as I'm doing here today. I have two chains and a pendant that I think combine really well together. So if you like these and are interested in getting some for yourself or as a gift for a loved one this holiday season, then now is the perfect time to do so with the Black Friday sale and I highly recommend checking them out. So there is a link in the description box that takes you straight to the website and the sale. So I want to give a massive thank you to Anna Louise again for sponsoring this video. And now let's talk medieval hair. So in the last episode, we discussed the earlier medieval ages from around the 6th to 13th centuries. And we saw that women's hair was, for the most part, covered by veils. Children and unmarried women usually wore their hair down and braided or loose and flowing, one or the other, while married women covered their hair with veils tied in various different styles around the head. So later in this period, uh, towards the middle of the 13th century, we saw the beginning of a shift that continues into the 14th century as well, where women still wear veils, but more and more of the hair is peeking out from underneath them. So that style we talked about last time, where the hair is worn in a hairnet with a barbette or the chin strap and a fillet or the band around the head, that became popular in the 13th century and is still popular in the 14th, and it actually evolves into a more luxurious and sophisticated style style with the hairnet becoming more luxurious for the upper class, sometimes featuring embroidery or even being made of gold. Alternatively, the hair is worn in buns on the temples or the side of the face uh, without a hairnet in a kind of similar style to that previous style and this hairdo can be worn with or without a veil. Now, in the north of Europe in the 14th century, there is one very distinct style that shows up remarkably often in images from this period and that is this one from these pictures. And the one I'm wearing right now, it features two braids that originate from the temples and are then worn in front of the ears, next to the face, looping back up and then either being tied there if the hair is short or wrapping around the back of the head if the hair is long enough to do that. This style is seen both with and without a veil on top, very often without a veil in fact, in which case it's probably worn by younger women. Alternatively, the braids could begin at the nape of the neck and then do the same thing but in the opposite direction. So they would be wound around, coiled upwards around in front of the ears and then tied up up top. Although you see this style more in southern sources, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So for this hairstyle with the braid loops, if a lady suffered from hair loss, there were hair pieces available made from fibers such as flax or wool that could be worn in place of one's own natural braids. These were, however, very much looked down upon specifically by the church um, and seen as a sign of vanity when used to just enhance one's own hair uh, when the hair was adequate. That is not to say that women didn't wear hair pieces frequently for many different reasons. <laughs> so another remarkable hair accessory from this period is the flower crown. All over Europe we see images of women with flower crowns made of either real flowers or silk flowers and they were worn with again either loose or braided long hair. 
the south of Europe. Here and in Italy especially, we are slowly starting to lose the veil altogether and women are starting to wear their hair unveiled again, regardless of their marital status. So many of the images of unveiled hair we have from this period are from the south of Europe and uh, from Italy more specifically. 14th century Italian ladies loved their braids. And this might be an understatement. We see braids in so many different shapes and sizes from this period, but generally there are one or two braids and they tend to be mostly coiled around the head in one way or another. And we can also even see some early examples of hair taping in 14th century Italy, which is a technique where the hair is bound and sewn um, with ribbons. But I will get more into that in later episodes when it is more prevalent. Um, but we do we do already see examples of it as early as the 14th century in Italy. So before we get into the tutorial and I show you how to recreate this look, I wanted to point out some interesting details about medieval and specifically 14th century hair care. So it is around this time that high foreheads became fashionable and started being considered very beautiful. So women started plucking their eyebrows into a very, very thin line and they started plucking or shaving their foreheads as well, um, shaving their hairline back as far as desired to create this high forehead look. And this look stayed popular for centuries to come. And this is what gives us that typical strange to the modern eye um, look that medieval women often have in images. So something else I found quite remarkable from this period while researching is just how many images we have featuring medieval combs. From these images, we can see clearly that they use this type of comb that is double-sided with white teeth on one side and then finer teeth on the other. It looks kind of like a comb that we use um, to comb lice out of sculptures and hair nowadays. <laughs> so the white toothed side was used to detangle the hair and then the fine tooth side was used to remove dirt and oils from the hair. So as a way of cleaning almost and actually thorough clean thorough combing of the hair or brushing um, is a method of cleaning the hair that is used all throughout history in periods where women washed their hair with water less frequently than we do nowadays which is not to say that they never wash their hair with water whatsoever though there are actually images from the medieval period of women washing their hair in tubs and written sources stating that they did so about once a week all right, so now that we have a bit of context, let's recreate a 14th century hairstyle.
And that is all I have for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really look forward to filming the next one on the 15th century. But if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for all the upcoming episodes of hair history still to come, as well as other beauty, fashion, lifestyle, and sewing videos. Don't forget to check out Ana Luisa's Black Friday sale through the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!